<clears throat> Afternoon, ladies and gents. Uh, Simon Brown here doing the introduction for Owen Berger. We're going to run about probably 20 to 30 minutes, certainly questions and the like always applicable. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to this edition. Um, quite a tough one when Simon said to me, that's what I want to do. Um, because, you know, so many people use so many different things and they don't easily share their tricks. They'll share their tips, but they won't share their tricks. Um, however, these are the ones that I've used on do use, and I know a couple of my friends use. Um, I hope you find them useful. Uh, I think um, there's, I'm running through 25 points. Some of them are tips, some of them are tricks. Um, and I think if you can comply with most of those, they should aid your trading remarkably. All right, let's start. Some of these might be quite basic, um, and certainly we've covered some of the points um, in webinars in the past, but this is a concise edition, right? My first tip, broker is key. And, and, and you can't believe how many times I get this question. Um, you yeah, know, well, I'm with this broker, and what broker would you recommend? Guys, you have to research your broker. Um, you have to try out prospective bro brokers. Once you've made a short list of brokers that you think are the ones that you'd like to go with or that any one of them you can go with, try them out. Um, don't be afraid to change brokers. And for me, key aspects of a broker is they need to be cheap. There's no use saying, yeah, but these guys are really good, but they are a little bit more pricey. It affects your bottom line, okay? Your broker needs to be cheap. Their feed needs to be fast. And, of course, they need to be ethical, all right? Um, and that you'll pick up from forums um, asking around. Ask what other bro um, traders are using, um, but really, broker is key. If you have a terrible broker, you cannot make a living trading. You're not going to make a profit trading, um, regardless of how good you are. All right, broker is key. Tip number two, be disciplined. I cannot emphasize this enough. If you are not disciplined, you will not succeed in trading. Um, yes, you might do well for a week, a month, or whatever, but it's pure beginner's luck. At some point, you're going to run out. Um, be disciplined in life as in trading. Um, trading is great at improving your character. It really is. Um, you spend many hours uh, introspection, um, providing that you also exercise your discipline and extend that into your daily life. In turn, your daily life will have a positive effect on your trading. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you. It does to me. Um, and I can vouch for those people. It really is critical. Tip number three, be consistent. Even if your trading is not. Um, you cannot flip-flop strategies looking for one that's going to work and then tomorrow decide, no, that one didn't do too well yesterday. I'm going to do this one today. You have to be consistent. You have to have a consistent mindset to trading. This is a trick, it's not a tip. Guys, you have to be healthy. Um, you want a healthy mind, you want a sharp mind, it comes from a, okay, a healthy body. Um, I find yoga works well. I also go to gym three, four times a week. Um, and it really, really makes a difference. If, if you've been depressed, uh, go to gym for an hour or two. You come back and you feel completely different. Um, or go and join the missus for her yoga class. I promise you, you might feel odd, but afterwards it's great. It really, really does make a difference, all right? Um, and important because you spend so many hours sitting at, 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 at your desk trading and you really need to get out, get the muscles working, get the brain working, get some oxygen to the brain. Seems obvious, but you'll be surprised at how many traders do not do this. They get out of bed, roll out of bed, flop down in front of their desk, into the comfy leather chair, and that's where they spend the day, other than trips to the kettle for coffee and to the fridge for snacks. Um, and there's very little time spent outdoors getting fresh air. Okay, tip five. Put your emotional gearbox in neutral before engaging the markets. Okay? You cannot be in an ecstatic mood and think, today the markets are going to be good to me. They're going to pull right out of, under your feet. Um, likewise, if you're feeling anger, anxiety, 
any kind of stress that you have emotionally, you need to be able to discipline yourself to put that into neutral. It does not affect you at work. At work is in front of your computer where you are trading the markets. Okay? The markets are ruthless. They do not care about you. They do not care whether you've had a bad day and they're going to feel sorry for you. They do not do that. Okay? These guys are ruthless. Trick number six, remove distractions from your trading environment. And that's easier said than done. Um, but if you've got lots of street noise, close the windows. Uh, if your air conditioner is noisy, replace it or make another plan. But those kind of noises can drive you insane after a week of trying to sit in front of your computer and concentrate on trading. All right? Those kind of background noises are not, not helpful. Um, maybe you can put on headphones and put on music. Um, uh, and that is, again, personal choice. There are guys who like kind of classical opera kind of music, and there's others who like it real rap, beat, rock, pop, whatever. Um, it, it's what fires your buttons. But um, if that helps you to, to get, get away from the other distractions of people walking past, of cell phones going off, then you need to do that. So there's various ways. You need to be creative, but you need to remove that distraction so that it's you and your computer screens and, and you can focus on your trading environment. All right? Lots of disruptions um, really puts your mind, um, gets your mind sidetracked, and you're going to make mistakes. Um, you're going to forget a trade open, or you're going to uh, forget to open a trade or something. All right? Um, press the wrong button at the wrong time. All right. Tip number seven. Don't get caught through ignorance. You know how many times I've seen this happen. It's happened to me before. Well, there's an electricity notice um, on the poles outside in your street that today you're going to have no electricity. But because you don't get out of your chair and go to gym, you don't notice the notices. And in the middle of your trade, whoop, no power. Okay? That really is a problem. Um, especially if your trade is getting close to where you need to either cut the stop loss or you need to take profit or whatever. Okay? And it sends up your anxiety levels in multiples. Uh, so don't, uh, don't be ignorant. Be aware of what's happening in your area. Um, check your diary. Make sure that you don't have an appointment that you've made long ago for today at 10 o'clock and you're starting trading at 9 and suddenly you get a call at 10 to 9 or are, are you on your way? Or 10 past 10 say, are, are you on your way? And suddenly all the trades are in mid-trade mid and what do you do with them? All right? You now have to run for an appointment. So please be prepared. All right? Tip number eight, clean trading space. Um, a bit like cleaning your mind. All right. uh, and it's small little things, but it makes a major difference. Guys, yes, maybe you can't clear your whole desk, but at least clear the area in front of your, your computer screens where you're going to have your trading papers, your calculator, your trading journal, whatever you need to trade with. At least have that clear so that the stuff doesn't lie. There's something else on top of it or a file from whatever lying and you keep shoveling papers um, at, at a moment's notice when you're trying to find something that you need to make the next decision. All right? So keep, keep your trading space clear. All right? And on that note, also if you have things that pop up, in front of your screen. I know lots of people have Skype running on their computer and suddenly some mate is trying to get hold of them and Skype pops up on front of your computer screen, in front of your, 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 um, your trading platform and just when you hit the, the button to execute the trade, Skype pops up and your trade did not execute. Okay? So keep those kind of pop-ups down to a minimum um, unless they're absolutely critical. So that's all to do with cleaning your trading space. It's not just desk space, also your computer space. All right. Now, some of you might find this strange. But even if you're alone in your office at home or your study, dress professionally. And it'll make a difference to how you feel and how you approach your work. Um, you dress sloppy and you're in slops or slippers. Um, you're going to feel sloppy. I, I mean... You go out um, for a night out on the town and you dress nicely. Just imagine how that feels. That you, you feel completely different. You approach things differently. Um, so you need to dress 
for the occasion. All right, and I really do believe that if you want to make a success of your trading or anything else for that matter, dress appropriately, even at home. Yes, um, be comfortable. Don't be uncomfortable, but certainly dress um, accordingly. All right. Getting to the trading, check your market news. Do not do not get caught unprepared. Forexfactory.com, a uh, great source of information of what's coming for the day, the morning for your session. Um, you can also see what's happened if you've missed, missed out on the markets for a day or two um, or just even for the evening while you were sleeping and you want to see what happened at the Asian markets, open Forex Factory, you can see what happened. You could see what's coming. That's important um, you know, in the next few hours. And you can um, work out how important those things are according to the strategy or the trading that you would like to do today. Do your homework well. Uh, goes without saying, but there's so many people, I see them, they've done homework once this month or this term, quarter, and I think that's going to carry them through. They can just open that, yeah, we're going to trade it. Yes, I know exactly what's happening in the market. But unless you have prepared your charts, um, and there are some people who cannot keep, who can't update their charts live while they're trading, all right? So before you start today, you make sure that you go back to yesterday's market moves and you draw the trend lines, you draw your fibs, or whatever it is that, that you work with, you need to prepare your charts. So you have a very, very clean and accurate picture in your head and on your charts about what you expect the market to do or what that, where you expect the market to make moves. All right? Please do not trade unprepared. And it's like hitting my head against a brick wall, but I can tell you, Nine out of ten traders that I know do this. They prepare once and they think that that's going to carry them. And, or maybe they've prepared for months or whatever and then they get blasé and they just simply think that they know the market. They can simply come and they can see it. All right? um, you need to prepare and you really need to do that well. All right? And it just makes a big difference to your, to your mental attitude. When you sit down in front of your computer half an hour or so before the markets open and you prepare your charts. You look at them, you study them, you draw what you need to draw. And when the market opens, you are ready. Okay, So please do your homework well. Be ready at market open. Often the trades set up around this time. You could miss opportunities, all right? There's a lot of movement right around that, just before, just after, during, when the market's open. Okay, some of it's quite erratic, so I'm not saying you have to enter a trade at market open, but it certainly also gives you a good idea of what to expect that day in the market. Um, you know, it certainly sets the trend um, quite often. Um, so be ready at market open, if at all possible. Um, but I find that that's really good mentally to be there, to see the market take shape um, and get an indication of what's going to happen that day. Um, quite often these things pull back or shoot up just for a few minutes and then turn at a point where you gonna could likely have entered a trade and that you had prepared for that but you weren't ready at when the market opened. So uh, these, these movements are quite fast around about when the market opens and everybody takes positions. All right, be prepared. Okay, this is something we've not covered in any of my webinars. Um, was keeping that for a point in the future. Heard of pivot points. Okay. Pivot points are calculations based on daily candles of the previous day. Um, they take into account the opening price, the closing price, the high and the low of the day before. And according to that, there's formulas that they work out pivot points as Resistance levels and support levels, so you get them um, given to you in S1, S2, um, support 1, support 2, um, and resistance 1, resistance 2, etc. Um, the market really does react at those levels and very accurately too. Depends on where you get your information from. Um, these two links that I've given you there, um, their pivot points are fairly accurate, mostly. I don't mean every day, but mostly they work. All right. Um, daily FX, um, 
the one that I prefer to use is Ducas Copy, um, they Swiss, and you can. What's nice about them is that you can isolate the pivots for the the currency pair that you're interested in. Whereas with Daily FX, all the currency pairs are all on the chart, and it's quite easy to make a mistake or to to cross read something. Whereas with Ducas Copy, you can select the the currency pair, and it will give you the pivot points very clear, very concise for that currency pair for that day. Okay. Um, but guys, don't just run off and start using pivot points. Please observe them for a week or, or more and make sure that you can integrate it into your trading. Right? It's certainly something that lots of pros are looking at. Um, and there's lots of pros tweak their pivot points. They would use the formula um, and maybe even draw a Fibonacci from those levels, whether the market actually turned at those levels or not, and then work off Fib levels at those, according to those pivot points. All right? um, so there's lots of tweaking you can do with pivot points, but they are quite strong in the market. Um, use them with discretion. Okay, tip number 14. Trade a plan or a strategy. Otherwise, you are gambling. All right? It is no good just looking at the market and starting to use your gut feel whenever you feel like it. Um, you have to, with this, this is where the discipline also comes in, stick to your trade plan or your trading strategy. Um, and don't just trade something ad hoc. Do not mix and match your strategies on the fly. I cannot tell you how many people do this. Um, they got two or three strategies and they would enter the market on one and they would, um, yeah, oh, yo, no, but according to this strategy, this market's actually going to go the other way, so I'm going to cut it on because of the other strategy telling me something. Please don't mix and match your strategies. It doesn't mean that you cannot trade two or three strategies in a day or even simultaneously, but you execute a trade on a strategy and you have to keep that trade on that strategy. You cannot sit or do anything else to it according to another strategy. If you open another trade on another strategy, by all means, do so. But don't mix and match strategies on a single trade. All right? On that score, that does not mean that you cannot merge strategies and see, whoa, now if I do this and I do this. But then, guys, that's a new strategy that you're developing. If you merge or mixing two strategies, you're developing a new strategy, and then on that score, you test it on demo first. You make sure it works. Don't just... Okay, well, I know strategy one and I know strategy two, and if I throw the two together, that's going to work, and off I go and I play that line. Please do not do that. You test your strategy. Um, it's called forward testing. You're going to test it from that point on for a week or two weeks or a month, and then say, this really works, and off I go, and I'm going to trade it live. I don't know how many of you have heard this, but I've seen this in real life quite often. Overanalysis causes paralysis. Okay? Um, it's got a bit to do with the mixing strategies, but in this, in, in, in your analysis, okay? You cannot cross-analyze according to different strategies and get yourself so confused that you don't know if you're going to trade long or short, buy or sell, okay? Be clear on your strategy, and yes, you might very well have a strategy that trades long or buy, and you might have another strategy that sells, you can do both, but don't get to the point where you're actually so scared you hit the end. You've confused yourself. No, am I analyzing and analyzing and analyzing? You've got not a clear picture on whether this market's going to go up or down, and you've got no idea where to trade. When that happens, take time off. Okay, go play golf, go to gym, uh, go for a walk on the beach, go climb a mountain, do something else, go for a ride on your bike. Um, come back with a clear head tomorrow. All right. Um, on that basis, if there's not a clear entry into the market, do not take it. All right. Biggest mistake of traders is that they're not patient. You have to be patient and you have to strike well. What I find often with traders, they sit for a day. And because they've sat for a day and they've not seen a trade, they feel they've not worked and they've not reached their daily target, or they've not reached their session target, or they've 
need, they told them that they need to average two or three or four or five trades a day for the month, and that's the only way they're going to make money. Be patient. If you do not trade for an entire week, but you've sat in front of a computer looking and ready to be traded, you've worked well. And you've had the discipline not to trade being the trade's not clear. All right? So do be patient. Um, don't miss the opportunities to trade, but only trade what is really clear, clear signal on your strategy. Hit the execute, and you will, your, 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 your hit rate will improve remarkably. All right? Do not be impatient. Trade the tech trend with confidence. Right, guys, we've seen this. Um, if counter trend is your game, um, your game plan, reduce your risk. You've seen this in the, in the live trading rooms I've done. When I've traded counter trend, reduce the risk half, half a percent, one percent, half of what you normally do, third of what you normally do. Trading with the trend, by all means, um, go for your full risk that you would normally do. Um, a small little statistic: if you trending with the if you're trading with the trend, there's a 70% chance of success and a 30% chance of failure. If you counter trend, you've got a 70% chance of failure and a 30% chance of success. And that's the reason that you reduce your risk on a counter trend trade. All right? This is a biggie. Um, lots of the pro traders do it. Have correlating charts ready for your second chance at missed opportunities. Okay, guys, you have to do your own work on this. I'm not going to tell you which pairs um, because they're not fixed. It doesn't always work like that. You have to do your homework and work out which pairs are correlated. Um, pound yen, euro yen, for instance, are often correlated. So if you want to try trade pound sterling versus the yen, and that moves slightly too fast and you don't get the entry, or turns before the trend line, or t whatever happened, but you've missed that trade, but you could see it's happening. If you have the other charts ready for Euro Yen, you can often catch the trade on that correlating pair. All right, so, um, and there are many pairs that are correlated. Many, many, many. Um, and some are inversely correlated. It doesn't matter. The one's going up, the other one's going down, but still a trade. It doesn't matter. You don't have to look for a buy, buy, buy. If you miss the buy on this one, that doesn't, then you could still take the sell on the oppositely correlated pair. All right? So do your homework on that um, and have that on the ready. Another big, big one, which is what most of the pros do that I know of, is you watch certainly two, but preferably three, time frames of the same currency pair at the same time. All right? Now, I do have a... A very good friend of mine who does not do this, but what he does do is he has the other two time frame data on that same chart. Um, and the way you would, for instance, do this, if you want, if you're watching the one hour um, and you don't want to watch the daily, you can have the 10 day moving average onto your one hour chart. You would have to work out what that is in terms of hours. It might be something like the 280 hour moving average. But that's the 10 day moving average and you could have that data on your one hour chart. All right, But you certainly need to watch the data from a couple of time frames to see where the market's going to react to these things. Because quite often, and I've been caught by this, where you watch on the one hour, and you cannot understand for the life of you why this market's turned where it's done because there's nothing on the one hour that's indicating a change there. Nothing. It doesn't line up with any single line. But there's a line on the one on the daily or on the four hourly that matches that. All right. So it really is uh, important that you watch more than one time frame. The other thing where this helps you is for your entry, for very precise entries and exits out of the market. So you you take the most profit and you have the smallest potential stop loss. Is if you yes you're a one hour trader. If you're watching the four hour chart and you're looking for an entry on five minutes, as close to that, maximize that run on, on pips that you want. Um, and this is where you can use the, the Brave Art strategy to really get you an early entry, but it's not a trading strategy in its own right. It's a micro strategy. You use whatever big strategy you have, and you use Brave Art to get you a very small time frame entry. Okay, trading journal is a must. Um, just about everybody I know 
get lazy and they do not follow through on this. I cannot stress this enough. They, and I'm not going to go through all the reasons now, but I can give you a hundred reasons why trading journal is really important. But the key important points on this is that it gives you a record down the line. If you, and I'm telling you, if people have a feeling that Euro dollar is their, their most successful pair, yet when you put it out on the trading journal, they might surprise themselves and realize that that's actually not a pair that they've traded all that successfully. But some of the other pairs are actually got a much better hit rate. Um, you can also then, if you have a, a, a trading journal record like this, you could work out in a month or two months time or in a three month period, you know, I've traded this pair, pound, yen or whatever, but that really is my least profitable pair and I should, what should happen if I maybe leave it out and let's try three months without that and trade the other pairs and see how I go. Uh, you really can do that kind of analysis, but you cannot do it if you do not have a record. Um, Guys, if you open that record, that's the <coughs> link that Simon has put up for you, you will see there's two sheets to that Excel spreadsheet. All right, and the next one is a cheat sheet. Don't look at that, that's tab two. Tab one for now is the trading journal. It's all laid out for you. There's filter arrows, so eventually you can filter by pair or by profit or by date or by currency pair, um, whatever. So the filters are all there. You just have to write in. And please use as many of those columns as you possibly can. Yes, there are times when you're not going to write them all in. Um, but do try and write them in. The last two columns are your reasons for entering the trade and for reason for exiting the trade. If you're trading a strategy, that is one of the most important points that you need to write in. Because that tells, will tell you when you come back to or review your trading down the line, which strategy has consistently provided good results. All right. Now, don't, don't, don't be shy of using that trading journal. Now, that is an Excel spreadsheet. Um, I find it difficult to enter these things on the computer because my computers are, are, are full of charts. Um, so it's better for me to print out that sheet for the day. I have it on my desk and I write it in a pen. When the trading is finished, or the next day before I start trading, I quickly capture that that info back onto the to the Excel spreadsheet. Yes, it's double work, but I find my screens get too busy with trading for me to still sit and capture all these other things. It's much quicker that while I'm watching the screen, you just write in info on a piece of paper. All right. I know it's not that green, um, and it doesn't get your paperless office, but for me, that's the the way it works better. Okay, there's the cheat sheet um, for quick position execution. It is included in the trading journal Excel file. It's the, it's the second sheet in that, in that file that you've downloaded. Guys, you don't have to change anything on that sheet other than the, the size of your capital account, of your trading account. You'll see there I've got $2,000. Um, you can change that to whatever, 2,500, 3,000, 5,000, and all the values for the half percent, one percent, one and a half, two, two and a half, and three percent values will change. Down the left, um, you will see there's a pip, a, that's the pips stop losses. So you would work out your account size according to the stop loss that you're going to select. So if you're selecting a 30 pip stop loss, you just go down to 30 pips, and you see according to the one percent or two percent risk that you want to take, what size of position you're going to take in the market. That's in dollars or in pounds, whatever it is you want. But you have to remember to convert that um, accordingly. If you're going to, if your account, trading accounts in dollars and you're now going to trade pound yen, one, one unit of trade is not one dollar. All right, you have to do the conversion. Okay, that's just a reminder for that. Nice. The next thing I hear people do often, and I've seen this, they start with a $3,000 account or 2000 or whatever. And three weeks down the line, their account's down to $2,000 or it's up by $1,000. But they are still trading the original position sizes when their account started at $3,000 because psychologically in their mind, they still have a $3,000 account. Now, this is good and this is bad um, in that 
you're not maximizing the potential profits in the market if your accounts change, your account sizes change. And secondly, you are risking too much in the market. If your accounts dropped in value and you're still trading at the original position size as if it's a $3,000 account, you're no, no longer risking a maximum of 2% when you take the 2% trade. You're risking something like 4 or 5%. On, on a daily basis, which is why that cheat sheet is really handy, whatever your position, your account size changed by today. So if I start today with the 3000 and tomorrow it's a $3,150 account, you change your cheat sheet to $3,150 and you take position sizes accordingly. Similarly, if you wiped out a third of your account and you're down to a $2,000 account, you need to trade smaller positions accordingly. All right, so please use that cheat sheet um, and change it daily according to the size of your account and trade according to that. Guys, we have spoken about this about two years ago. There's custom FIB levels. These are the FIB levels that I use. Not all of them are available on the internet. Um, I've got them from other sources. I've not developed them all myself. Um, these are really key little levels and especially if you take them on the biggest time frames like daily or four hourly and you then come back to trade them on the five minute on the brave art strategy, those are invariably all levels that you're going to potentially find the market makes a change or makes a move at. All right? Um, put them into your Fib, um, on your Fibonacci tool um, and keep them displayed on your chart. They do work. And my last point for today. Ignore Bloomberg. I've seen so many traders sitting with their satellite DSTV on watching the lady or the man from Bloomberg and they're trying to trade what they're seeing on Bloomberg. You cannot do that, all right? Yes, it might give you important other info that you can use. I'm not saying you can't. You cannot trade live off Bloomberg. You cannot hear something there and then execute a trade on your screen because of something you've heard. It's too slow for that. They, their feed is a minute or two minutes slower. The guys who were going to trade that news have done so already. You cannot trade that news from Bloomberg. Secondly, I find it very distracting um, because I'm starting to make up my mind according to what I hear people say and not according to my technical analysis. Ladies and gentlemen, that's my bundle. If there's any questions. Thanks, Alwyn. Uh, ladies and gents, obviously the video will be up uh, probably tomorrow morning sometime of, of the webcast. Uh, it's probably the best 35, the most valuable 35 minutes that you've spent in your trading career. Um, in large part, that's why I asked Owen to do it for me, uh, do tips and tricks. Owen, I don't want to take too many questions because we run out of time, but a, a great one from, from, from Varesh, and it, it, it's, it's uh, 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 maybe not the easiest. I'll read it as it is. He says, uh, thanks for sharing. My question is, how do you know when you finally hit success in this trading game? Is it when you start making money little by little, or when you hit that big target, finding big target, elusive, but small wins constantly happening? I'm going to give a short answer, then I'll throw it over to you, Owen. My sense is that, that little by little and slowly the portfolio grows. The big wins I just consider to sort of be cream on the top. Yeah, and the big ones are certainly getting fewer and f further apart. I mean, if you look at any chart nowadays, there's very, I mean, if you look at the market over a two year period, it's really not moved far. It's just hovering between the highs and the lows of what it's done for the last two years. So you need to, to I think, to be a successful trader, you need to, to, to continuously chip away at it. If you can continuously chip away profits, and you'll go back to your trading journal, and you can see I've got a hit rate of 60 or 70% of profitable trades, you're on your way. doesn't matter what the account balance is at that point. You're on your way. Yeah, no, that's it. I, I think it is, absolutely. Uh, folks, a, a bunch of questions coming through. Um, I don't want to take necessarily all of them. A uh, question is, is, is this applicable to, to, to trading uh, equities or derivatives? Short answer, yes. Obviously, some of them perhaps less so when they're particularly uh, uh, FX focused. Owen is a, a FX trader. Really, what we're looking at here was was the FX, but a lot of those 25 are going to work. 
uh, across uh, whatever you trade. Um, to Helen, who's saying uh, tip 25, ignore Bloomberg, except for when Simon is on. Helen, the check is in the post. Thank you very much. Um, Owen, a brilliant presentation. Really, really thank you. We're getting great response from the, the, the forum. Uh, ladies and gents, we really appreciate your time today. Thank you, Simon. That was great being here. Uh, until next time. Cheers, all.